So in this screencast, what we're going to do is look at a demonstration of using a taxonomy to search across uh, RDF graphs. Uh, and this is searching data coming from the IODP central inventory uh, for sample requests and cores uh, data. So what are we looking at doing? We have two separate uh, schemas for data coming from the European and Japanese uh, locations. At least those are the ones that we're using uh, in this example, ESO and CDEX. Um, two different um, sets of data related to uh, sample inventory. Uh, we have two different vocabularies describing elements um, within uh, those data sets. And what we want to do is develop a Sparkle call that allows us to pull data across both graphs based on um, resolving those vocabularies in the taxonomy. So. Uh, the elements that we have then are our RDF vocabulary, the data sets themselves, and the Sparkle call uh, that's on that. So let's take a little look at uh, what we're looking at in terms of data. If we look at the ESO data set that's coming back, uh, we'll see that uh, I've already converted this into RDF. Uh, for ESO, the uh, source data is an XML, so the conversion to RDF was rather simple. For CDEX, the source data was uh, in CSV files. Uh, the conversion there was uh, rather simple as well. Uh, so what we've done is we've defined up a namespace for ESO, uh, defining out things like uh, the sample key, location, site hole, course section, uh, and other elements uh, down through there that are associated with a sample request uh, on these particular cores. Uh, we also tossed in uh, a few cost related elements uh, just because we can use this in other uh, elements of the graph and other elements of the linked data testing that we're doing for ocean leadership. We can take a look at the CDEX data then, uh, and we can see right off that it's a, it's a larger record uh, with uh, uh, a lot of different terms, a lot of different terms uh, in the vocabulary. So one of the things that I looked at here, uh, since this was a test, was not really worrying about creating an RDF vocabulary for both of the parameters uh, in these two files, but really just kind of looking at a few parameters that we might be able to do some testing with, and the one that left uh, out was the fact that both of these um, graphs, both of these data sets, these models have sample volume associated with them. So what we did then was uh, we went into our RDF um, uh, document, defining some of our vocabulary elements, our terms, and put in values uh, within uh, CDEX and ESO namespaces for volume. And so these are using the parameter names coming from both uh, of those particular data models. Uh, and we gave them uh, RDF labels uh, and just a simple comment that these are in fact sample volume associated with the CDEX and ESO. We then added an, another node in here um, defining a new top level IODP concept for volume and associating it then with both the ESO and CDEX volume concepts. And so we just did a simple SCOS related um, association within our RDF file. So, we now have a vocabulary file that contains the concepts of volume for both the ESO and CDEX um, sample requests, sample inventories, and then a new concept that associates those two with, with, with uh, kind of a broader, more program-wide concept of volume. We load all this then uh, into our Sparkle server. So we have our, our, our ESO sample inventory data, our CDEX sample inventory data loaded in, and we have this vocabulary uh, loaded in as well. So now, what can we do with it? So let's uh, take a look now at uh, issuing some Sparkle calls against this. Now, we'll go to our Sparkle endpoint here. And one of the things that we can do is, having looked at our uh, RDF vocabulary, we gave them labels. And we give the top level concept for volume, the simple label of volume. We would probably give that a little bit more of a namespace on the for, But for testing purposes, this is fine. And in fact, if we run that query, then we'll notice that we take our top level concept of volume and associate it with our um, program level, uh, operator level uh, concepts of volume. In, in the case of ESO volume, in the case of CDEX sample volume, centimeters cubed. Now what we can do then uh, once we have that, we can actually go just one step further, right? Because at this point, then we can extend this particular query 
and now say that we want to actually pull back the resource URI associated uh, with a particular uh, sample request that has a concept of volume. And, and in this case, we'll also pull back then uh, the volume value associated with that. So now what do we have? We have a master concept of volume. This will be the same for all of them. We have the program concept for volume. And we'll have two of these, one for CDEX and one for ESO. And then we'll have the resource URI associated with a sample that has a concept of volume, right? And we've printed out then our volume value as well. And so as we come down through here, we can actually just kind of visually see that we're cutting across uh, both programs, both CDEX and ESO in this case here. And we have a volume value here as well. We can now begin to filter on the volume value if we uh, were to go back to our RDF graphs and declare a volume value to be of an integer or float. Uh, component, we could then do operations like greater than or lesser than or, or range in between on those volumes. But what we've really done is we've taken a, a concept of volume out of both graphs and associated that with a new uh, concept that makes an association to those. So now we can present to the user the ability to look at different top level concepts. And if we define the relationship of those top-level concepts, the concepts within the primary data graphs that we're dealing with, right? In this case, the uh, sample inventory uh, data graphs, but cutting across all the other uh, parameters and all the other uh, data sets that would be involved with uh, IODP, then we can begin to see a capacity um, to extend our searching from not only just parameter-style searching, and drilling down on parameter values that are there, but also concept style searching and facet type browsing uh, down through these. And so we have two different ways, two different views that we can have uh, on our data collection within IODP. So that concludes this very simple screencast on uh, RDF taxonomies and um, searching across multiple graphs and sources uh, using Sparkle and linked data principles.